Welcome to anyone watching. What this video shows is the auxiliary lighting panel and the stability augmentation system panel uh, which are from the A10C and will be used with Digital Combat Simulator. I've actually built these as two separate panels which I've just placed side by side here to test because uh, when I build them into the left console that's the way in which they're arranged within the normal A10C. If we just take a quick closer look at them, we can see they're both built in the same uh, standard way that I've built most of the other panels, spray painted acrylic with a series of layers behind with lighting and to hold the wiring, all the output through keystone jacks. If we jump into a systems test now and we can see it up and running, so this is uh, simulating normal nighttime conditions, both backlit and floodlit within the A10C, and obviously backlit on the panel I'm testing. The three dials, um, which I'm actually just testing now, which are across the two panels, are all using 10K potentiometers, and they're interfaced through DCS BIOS along with the takeoff trim indicator that we're just testing now. And all of the other buttons and toggles are all interfaced through a keyboard encoder. So across all of the panels I've built, there tends to be a split where there are a few panels that are just keyboard encoder only, such as the fuel panel. And there are some that are just DCS BIOS only, such as a caution light panel. And then there are some, like these two we're looking at now, where they both use a mix of those two interfaces. Something worth taking a moment to look at is, if you look at the physical panel where I've got the monitor test toggle, and then you look at the toggle switches on the actual panel in the sim on the left, when I click the toggle for the monitor test, did you see the ones in the sim reset themselves? So if we just zoom in and we'll have a, a closer look at that. So if we keep an eye on the four toggles on the panel within the sim on the left, and I now click the monitor test button, do you see how they, they reset themselves in the sim? Now, that's because the actual A10C has magnetically held toggles. It has four of them at the top of the SAS panel, which we're just zooming in to look at now. So from a functionality perspective across these two panels, the auxiliary lighting panel replicates exactly what's happening in the sim. But the SAS panel I've built replicates everything fully with the exception of those magnetically held switches. Because the four switches you can see there, the toggles, are just ordinary toggles. And it will be somewhere into the future where I'll look to upgrade the panel to have magnetically held toggles included. In terms of the construction of these two panels, there's probably just only a couple of points I can mention here which are really different to what I've um, mentioned in some of the other videos. And the first would be just to highlight uh, which parts of the panels that go via DCS BIOS, which I'm just highlighting there, and which are interfaced via keyboard encoder. So this is the auxiliary lighting panel and how that's split. And the split for the SAS panel with DCS BIOS controlling the your trim and the takeoff trim indicator lights and the keyboard encoder controlling the five toggles and the takeoff trim push button. So any wiring which is from components that will be used with the keyboard encoder, all of that wiring gets fed into orange keystone jacks and in the same way, any wiring that connects to components that are used with DCS BIOS, that is all fed into blue keystone jacks. I have found that by colour coding the component outputs in terms of the method by which it will be interfaced to the sim, does make the whole wiring setup a whole lot more simple to keep on top of. And when you go back to revisit a panel that you've perhaps worked on several months ago and it's one of 
20 panels that you've built, it definitely makes it a lot easier to be able to go back and you can understand straight away what you're looking at. The final part of the build that is probably worth taking a moment to look at is the implementation of an indicator light for the takeoff trim. So the first thing I've done is revisited some of the different types of LEDs I've got. The one we're looking at here is the same one I use in a DVADR recording unit, which in that video I mentioned that to, to look at, um, it looks bright enough to the eye, but when it's at the rear of some acrylic, it really does not cascade enough light to actually illuminate the text. Something that's really worth bearing in mind, and this is when you look at the data sheet, and I've, I've superimposed there the spatial distribution chart for what were the final LEDs I used, is that first of all you need an LED that's bright enough, but even when you find that one, it only really cascades a light effectively in a 40 degree arc, which is 20 degrees either way of directly upright. And therefore, even when you do find one that is bright enough, you tend to find that you need two of them which are wire in parallel, which can be side by side, to make sure you can actually illuminate the whole width of the text. In this test, I'm looking at the low current super bright LEDs, and if I illuminate them, you can see they're a whole lot brighter. But if I move them, so you, from a spatial distribution perspective, you can see it more from a top-down view, you can really see they're a whole lot brighter. And it will still need to, given the angle it cascades light at, to be sure the whole text is illuminated. So these are all the parts that will make up the indicator light, the piece of acrylic, which actually cut from the waste material of a panel, um, along with the LEDs, resistors, and some prototyping board to mount the legs of the LEDs through. I've put those components together, I've wired the LEDs in parallel, and just created this very simple circuit, which I'm just testing now to be certain that it will it'd be adequate to illuminate the text and work as an indicator. So that, that'll be sufficient for what we need. And if we just take a real quick look at the back, very simple, just very quickly put together as a simple circuit to just power them in parallel with the resistors in place. So I can now take that indicator light and just install that into the panel. You can see the circuit board there. And what will now need to happen is I'll need to cover the rear of that circuit just so that the light, which is backlighting the panel and illuminating the normal text, doesn't shine through because we only want the indicator light to illuminate when we actually press the takeoff trim button. Well, that's another uh, two panels complete now and just on a big final push to get the other ones ready so I can start building the actual left console to, to put them into. Hopefully the few notes that have been added on the video just to show how the indicator light was built and how I've split the wiring for the microcontroller and the keyboard encoder uh, were helpful. And thanks for watching.